Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fuse cereal box liners or bags, these guys here. And I'll also give you lots of ideas on projects that you can create. These are just some of the things that I made. We have journals, journal covers, envelopes, tags, random little things, pockets, pouches, pockets, all sorts of things, right? Sky's the limit. So this is a very simple idea. You're either going to love it or hate it. I hope you love it like I do. I'm going to start off with showing you these in just a little bit more detail to get your creative juices flowing and then we'll start with the fusing process. And basically all you need is an iron and some cereal liners. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I made is these four journals and these are the covers and then I just bound in some signatures or signature and made these little journals and that's just using a cereal box liner and a napkin. And you can see here I made two that are the same and then I use different napkins for these two here. If, for example, you don't have napkins and you can't do this particular project, I've also made some journal covers that don't, that's just the cereal bag. There's no napkin in here. I just put some punched out shapes in there to make it look a bit more fun. So you can either have something in between the sheets like I did with napkins and with the punch out shapes or not. You can just create something like this, for example. You see that? A cereal bag that's been fused. I did put this through my embossing machine just to get some pattern things going there. But for example, this one here, I didn't put it through my sewing, uh, I mean, uh, embossing machine. And it's still, I kind of really like it. And this is what I mean by love it or hate it. Uh, I, I don't know, some people might hate this idea, but the sound and the texture, it just speaks to me. I love it. So, okay, that's what you can do if you don't have any napkins. And I mean, you can put other things in there. You can put tissue paper or sewing pattern paper or some thin scrapbook paper. All right, next thing I made are these envelopes. And I put little things in there and basically it's exactly the same process, but instead of making a journal cover, I made these envelopes. Next thing I did are these tags. I'm not overly excited about these. I mean, they look, they're not very functional in a journal. They do add a little bit of something interesting to a journal but it's not really functional like you can't write on it but I don't know there's that then I just basically fused some cereal liners over a napkin to create this single sheet of fun and then what I did also exact same thing for this one here I made it into a pouch like this it's very very sturdy and basically it's just these two that I've popped together like this and sewn all around to create a pouch really quite simple here I have created a pocket so this can be a page in a journal and we have that pocket I just love the sound and the texture if you like the sound of crinkly things in your journal, this is perfect. And this is what I meant by a random when I said random. These are just images also from napkin. And you know, napkins are very thin and frail. This is the only thing I can show you now. So this is just one sheet of napkin. You can see very, very thin and very frail, rips easy, that kind of thing. Whereas if you fuse it in between two layers of cereal bag, you can preserve that image if it's something that you really, really like. Again, not the most functional thing in the world. You can't write on it, for example, but you know, it's just a fun thing to do. So I wanted to start off with something functional like the envelopes and the journal covers. And then, you know, I, I sort of wanted to see where it takes me. And this is why I'm showing you this so that you can get your creative juices flowing as well. So now that we've quickly gone through this, let's start with the tutorial. So the very first thing that you need to do is get your cereal bag and open it all the way up. And it doesn't matter if it's all crinkled up, none of that matters. So once it's opened all up, you need to wash it. So I'm not gonna be using this one today, but I do have some that are already washed and ready to go. So I have some larger ones and I have some smaller ones, so I can just use whatever size I need in the project that I'm doing. Next thing you need is something to protect your surface that you're working on. This is way too small for me, but this can do. I actually use this bigger size cardboard. You have to be sensible, obviously, with this project because we are using heat, we are using an iron. So 
just make sure you're protecting your desk i like to actually do this on the floor but i'm filming so here i am on my desk and then you need some baking paper so this is basically just non-stick baking paper and i keep reusing this you can see it's starting to yellow here in the middle and this is stopping the cereal box liner from gluing onto anything else because it's non-stick right and then of course you need your iron most people have an iron i don't use mine very much it's very dusty but i do use it in craft projects like this okay so i've already turned my iron on and it's best to have it i guess on medium heat and then go from there sometimes i needed to put it up on high heat and sometimes it works on medium heat so i'm just going to start with medium heat and if you have any steam or any of that turn that off because you don't really want steam for this project you just want a dry dry heat all right so while my iron is heating up i'm going to show you how to do the fusing with the napkin in between if you don't have napkins you can go ahead and just fuse without putting anything in between if you have something like this this is sewing a pattern paper a very very thin tissue paper or if you have just tissue paper for some color you can pop that in between your cereal bags or punch that shapes like i've shown you before but you want to have if you're using napkins you just want to use one sheet so you know you want to separate them but before i do that i'm just going to cut this in half because let's pretend i'm making a journal cover i'm going to cut that in half and then that's how high my journal cover is going to be okay here we go that's cut in half and now i'm going to separate the two sheets because the thinner material in between the better all right so i need one baking paper down the bottom then i'm going to put my cereal bag this one is very neat looking it's not crinkly but that's not on purpose it just happens to be that way i have some really crinkly ones i'll use them later so you can see all right so i've opened it up or if you have two smaller size bags you just put one on top of the other if that makes sense so you want to sandwich whatever you're using in between two sheets of cereal bag so i'm just going to pause it oh, things falling all right here we go so that's sandwiched in between the two sheets and now of course if i go and iron over this it's going to stick to my iron and that's why we're using this so common sense here okay you have to be kind of careful you have to just be mindful when you start to go on there with your iron you know you don't want to stick on one spot for too long and kind of like when you're ironing clothes you know you don't want to stay in one spot for too long so here we go just move keep moving your iron and go all around and try not to get you know to get your iron onto any exposed cereal liner and i'm going to stop now and i'm going to have a look at how it's looking so if you apply too much heat on one you see this start it starts to kind of bubble up and this is another reason why i kind of sometimes hate it but i don't know i kind of don't okay so i'm just going to have a look at how it's looking so that hasn't really fused it's fused to the top sheet but it hasn't fused to the bottom which tells me that i need to have my iron on a higher setting so it all depends on your iron it's probably better to start off medium or low setting and then just work your way up rather than start in a too high setting and then burn things and all sorts of stuff so i'm just gonna wait a little bit for my iron to heat up to that full setting so while i'm waiting i just want to show you something you absolutely cannot strive for perfection with this project so it doesn't matter how careful you are there's always going to be some of this happening and i actually don't mind this look it's gonna wrinkle up it's gonna bubble up and I don't know maybe it's something to do with iron or the heat or just the nature of the project so i think in this junk journal making world it's basically not about perfection so don't expect perfection with this project and i'll show you this one up close as well and the serial liner does kind of mute the uh, the pattern on your napkin a little bit and you can see the back that's kind of what it looks like so you're not gonna have that perfect laminated look with this method okay my iron is now i'm pretty sure heated up on highest let's see what happens i'm just gonna leave this here so you can see how it's bubbling up as it's cooling down so let's have a look
So I don't know how well you can see, but that's fused. You can see my bag here is completely fused, but I didn't spend enough time on this corner over here. So I need to go back there. Just, you know, corners are probably the most important. You just want to apply heat all the way around past the napkin. Here we go. So very, very hot. I don't know, my hands can handle a little bit of heat, but just be careful. Peeling everything off and here we go. So I'm just checking all around. You can see how the bag is fused all around the napkin, if that's what you want. And when you cut, start cutting into the napkin, it's probably best not to cut all the way to the napkin because then things might separate. If you apply enough force, this will separate. Let's see. So you can see it's quite, you know, I'm trying to demonstrate. It's quite tough, but still when I cut, I don't want to come all the way up to the napkin. You can see in these ones, I used my zigzags. I actually did some sewing as well, just because I like to be on the safe side. And also because it adds a little something extra as well. But you can see I used my zigzag six scissors and so I've left a little bit of space there. I might just cut around this now. I'm going to use my zigzag. You can use any scissors, it doesn't have to be zigzag, but just leave a little bit of space. Here we go. So these are all going into the plastic bag recycling program. Awesome. And here is the journal cover. So, oh, how easy was that? Fold it in half. You can sew it here, have a pouch, all sorts of things. It's really fun. And that's how the inside looks. Not too shabby. And then you can see I have created a journal. So I'll open it up so you can see. That's my napkin, fused cereal bag, and I have just sewn in a single signature and created this cute little junk journal. I did some embellishing, all sorts of things, you know. And once again, remember before when I said you're either going to love or hate this project. I mean, there's many materials and ways of making journal covers. Do we really need to fuse cereal bags to make journal covers? Probably not. Do we need to make junk journals at all? You know, we can just go and buy a $2 notebook. We don't need to make junk journals. So does that make sense? It's just another thing that we can do, you know, which is why I love it. All right. I might do a little envelope next so you can see. So maybe I can use the other side of this napkin and maybe I can make an envelope like this. Now I'm going to do the exact same process. Protect my desk. Add my non-stick baking paper, add a cereal box liner. And another thing that I forgot to mention, I have found through my experimentations that the cereal liners have a really shiny side and a slightly muted side. It's better to sandwich whatever you're putting in there onto the shiny side. The shiny side sticks better. So that's the shiny side up. Separate my napkin and then cover it with the cereal bag. Cover it again with my non-stick baking paper and iron over the top. I'm really focusing on the edges here. Here we go. And now it's going crazy and buckling up. Let's have a look. It's better to underdo it than to overdo it and then cause all sorts of problems. So you want to inspect and then maybe go over it again if you need to. I'm just checking maybe the edges. That looks quite well sealed looks quite sealed all around so I think that's it for this one I'm just gonna cut it up now so I actually have some other projects in the description box below that use these cereal bags that don't involve the fusing no fusing no ironing involved so if you want to check those out it's in the description box and that's why I have this many cereal bags because I've used them before and I know that I'll use them again so I just save all the cereal bags and here we go, a little envelope, and I'm just gonna go around here and sew that down, and I'll have my envelope. And in case you're wondering, with this one here, you can see that ruffle up the top over here. So basically, I do have a video on creating these continuous paper ruffle rolls, and I'll link that down below as well. And basically, I just cut a little piece. You can see here, I just cut a little piece, 
like this and sew it on i don't know should i do that i'm gonna do it why not i've done it on the other ones i might just sew that on here and here we go so i've just sewn that directly on you can see here it's gone right through the napkin i mean i don't know i wasn't really planning to do this in in this kind of detail but you can have it this can be a journal you can you can sew in a signature here and it can be a journal like this with a closure so i don't know what do i want to do do you do i want to have it as a journal i think i do okay so if i was making an envelope i would take it to my sewing machine just sew down the sides right and there's my envelope or a little pouch but i actually really like the idea of this being a little journal what do you think yes and i'll try and think fast here and think of some type of a closure for this journal so i'm thinking maybe a bread something like this maybe i can use one of these larger breads i've had these for years and i barely use them and people always ask me they are from kaiser craft and i think this bread is going to look really nice it's red even though it doesn't look red in video but you could really just punch a hole through there wrap some ribbon around and done but i'm choosing to use a bread because that's exactly what i've done on these envelopes and just so you can see the process of creating these envelopes i guess so i'm just going to find an approximate middle let's see somewhere here poke a hole using a pokey tool or an awl this isn't actually an awl but this is an awl anything that's going to poke a hole there pop the bread through like that I'm really liking how this is going and I'm just going to wrap some string around maybe I'll go with this black black and white twine I think it's going to look okay and I'm just working out how much I will need to wrap it around maybe once I think once will do I think that's going to look okay so easy all right so I've just made that loop and I'm going to loop it under the bread of course you can do this before closing the bread just like that and i'm going to tie a knot maybe a double knot so easy and quick and there's my closure and then of course some beads over here all right here we go there's my journal cover with some beads down the bottom and of course we need a signature in there which of course i don't have ready because i wasn't planning on on actually doing this but let's pretend that this is a signature and we have sewn it in oh you know i love it i love when things happen that like this that i i wasn't planning on doing this all i need to do is make a signature bind it in embellish it a little bit and done how easy and simple and how much fun was that maybe i'm getting a bit too excited but i don't know i just i really like this all right what else can we do so i don't really think i need to demonstrate this uh, process anymore because you've seen how it's done but i thought maybe i can do one more without using the napkin maybe i'll show you how i did the one with punch out shapes I'm going to come into my box of like punched out shapes and just maybe pop some around here, there and everywhere. I'm pretty sure you get the idea by now. So here we go. So you can see how that plastic has melted in between the shapes. So some of these shapes are quite thick, but if you're using thick material, what you want, you know, space in between them so they can be glued in there you can see this one so for this journal here that's what i did for the cover i just added some shapes and then just to make it a little bit more interesting i added some zigzag sewing all around and a straight stitch all around as well just to make it a little bit more interesting and i actually went through with the sewing machine to sew in this signature of fun stuff that you know it's going to look really fun when it's embellished and written in and all that sort of thing so oh and i also did put it through my embossing machine it's just making it look a little bit more appealing i guess i mean i don't really mind this you know all right so that's that one 
So for these ones here, I just wanted to show you, I used an image from a napkin, did the fusing process, and then basically what I did is then I just cut all around so you can see these straight edges. And then I just went around with it on my sewing machine just to be sure that none of that is going to be peeling off. What can you do with this? I don't know. That is the question. The first thing that pops into my mind, maybe. Let's just say you want to make a simple journal using this as your cover, this cardstock. You can have perhaps something like this. This can be maybe a, remo a removable closure. So what you would do is punch a hole here, punch a hole here, add a little bit of elastic or not, maybe add some eyelets, pop a little bit of twine through the hole, up the top and down the bottom like this. I don't know, is this a good idea? I don't know, it's, it's just an idea. You can develop it more, I guess, and then have something like that happening. It can be a belly band inside a journal. You can maybe add just some random strips of paper and sew that on and then again up the top you know, like that, and then it can be a belly band, or I don't know, it's just an idea. You can you can skip the whole thing altogether, you know, and work on more functional things. It can be a little tag type thing on a, on a gift, I don't know. Another thing I want to show you, if you are using napkin, for example, and some of them open up this way, right? So the crease is there. So if you're making a journal, your image is going to be sideways. So not all of the napkins are going to work well for journals, for example. So what I did with those types of napkins, like this one, for example, I just cut, you know, that one panel, like you see on this one here, and fuse them individually, right? So they're both fused. And then, you know, I went ahead and I made this pouch. Nothing special, just, you know, a little pouch. So I would back them up together like this, like I said before, and just sew down the three sides and there's the pouch. The tags I've already shown you, is I've just added some little brads here up the top to make it look more interesting because I really wasn't happy with the tags and I probably honestly wouldn't bother with these again. Definitely not. And then also over here, I actually only fused one side so it's not even double sided so if you don't have many cereal bags like i just put my napkin and just used one i didn't sandwich it in between and then you have one side that's done and the other side that isn't and that's why i made this into a pocket and also that's why i sewn around because this will definitely be able to peel off and then this is just a fused two sheets fused together I wonder what will happen if I just put a book page, for example, in between. I'm going to try that now. I have some of these watercolored book pages, and I'm just going to see what I can do with them. They don't have to be watercolored, but, you know. I ran out of the large cereal bags, so I'm just going to use the smaller ones, one over the top of the other. Put my book pages in, looking for the shiny side, shiny side down. This one's all crinkled up. It's fine. And here we go, cover it up, and let's see what happens. I might have gone over it a little bit too much, let's see. You might want to see the mistakes too, so here we go. Look at it all crinkled up. So you can see here, I wonder if it's because the book page is too thick or because I kept going over it, but it's not sealed. So. I don't know, why not try and go over that part again? Let's see. I just remembered actually, I saw a video years ago, I think, from Shannon Green, and she was fusing some crayon shavings in between the cereal bags. I'm pretty sure it was cereal bags she was using. That seemed to have done the trick. All right, so I'm gonna go and make something with this. I'll be right back. I'm thinking if I had them aligned nicely, that could have been my spine. I could have made another fun little journal cover, but I don't know. And please, if you're having ideas pop into your head as you're watching the video, I probably should have said this at the beginning, write them down in the comment section so that everyone can see and get inspired. Maybe we can even do something with these little pieces. It might be going a little bit overboard because then, you know, where does it end? When do you say it's enough? This piece needs to go into the bin. I mean, they're not going into the bin. They're going to be taken to the, you know, bag recycling. But 
I don't know, maybe we can do something with these little pieces. Are you getting any ideas? They can be little windows. I'm just thinking in the previous video when I did these houses, maybe we could utilize these somehow. I mean, not all ideas have to be great ideas, but nor do all ideas need to be repeated and done again. But I guess when the muse visits, you follow the muse. So I just thought maybe I can make a little quick little thing. I don't know. Here we go. A little see-through pocket. Nothing spectacular. Maybe that can be like on the other side of this. Impromptu crazy creative sesh. And now that can go here. And there we go. Another pocket at the back. So you follow the muse. So just a little see-through pocket. All right, back to these. So see what I mean? I didn't really align them properly, so I can't have this as a journal cover, but that would be quite cool to have that see-through spine. And like I said before, this, it's very sturdy, very sturdy. I wonder if I should try and rip. So, all right, it does rip, but it takes a lot of force. So a lot of force. I'm pretty strong, in case you didn't know. All right. Okay, so I was just thinking, I actually cut them up individually like this. And then I was just thinking to use that leftover piece as a spine, perhaps. Because I'm not being, I'm kind of, um, I've been filming for a while and I kind of had enough. And I just want to finish this. I want to make something with these two. And this is the only thing that's coming to me. So I thought maybe that can be my spine and then I can just, I don't know, sew that onto there. I'm just thinking this, it would be nice if this had some decorative edge. Maybe something like this, you know. But I'm, I don't know, not everyone has that kind of thing. So I'm just going to go in with my scissors and do whatever. We really don't need all the fancy tools. I think that's going to look okay. All right, here's what I made. It's like a journal cover type of thing. Is it the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? No, probably not. And this is what I mean by when I said at the beginning, either gonna love it or hate it. There are so many better products that we can use to make nicer things. Like fabric, for example, you can make a fabric journal cover. We don't need to use cereal bags to make journal covers. But something about reusing, repurposing, upcycling, recycling really speaks to me. And projects like this in particular, I don't know why, but they really speak to me and I feel, I can't describe what I, what I feel actually when, when I make something out of junk. I love the process. I love the creative process. I love thinking up new projects and, and all that kind of thing. So while it's not the prettiest looking thing in the world, it was a whole lot of fun making it. So what do you guys think about this project? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you inspired? Let me know in the comments down below. I think out of all of the things that I made, I think this has to be the very favorite thing. I mean, it's not finished yet. I still have to, you know, do the whole thing, but I absolutely love how this looks. I think overall, the creative process was a lot of fun. Just thinking up new ideas and new ways of going about this project. And I think I didn't actually exhaust the ideas obviously guys the limit right i just had an idea of fusing plastic bags in between the cereal bags because the plastic bags are also going to melt you can make like a plastic fabric type of thing you know so if you have some really colorful plastic bags you can maybe cut out shapes from the plastic bags and then sandwich in between the cereal bags and then iron it and they're all going to melt and fuse together and then you have this really even thicker, even sturdier skin that you can work with. There's a whole lot of fun to be had, but I have had enough for today. Have you had enough? I think I'm done. So I hope you feel inspired. That's the main idea here. And I hope your creative juices are flowing and you have your own ideas, which I hope that you'll share in this, in the, you know, the comment section. And that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.